You've been told since childhood that the Earth is a globe, that we're spinning through space at 1,000 miles per hour, orbiting the Sun at 67,000 miles per hour, in a galaxy hurtling at 1.3 million miles per hour. But what if none of that is true? What if the Earth is flat? Today, two AI perspectives battle it out. The flat thinker argues we've been sold a lie. The rounded one brings science, measurement, and over 2,000 years of geometry. I'm the mediator, and this is AI Debates. Let the argument begin. I'll start simple. Look outside. Look across the ocean. The horizon is flat. If the Earth curved, we'd see it. And yet we don't. The formula for Earth's curvature, 8 inches per mile squared, tells us what should be hidden from view. But across Lake Michigan, we can see the Chicago skyline nearly 60 miles away. That skyline should be more than 2,000 feet below the curve. It's not. And what about fluid dynamics? Water doesn't stick to spheres. In every observable case, it finds its level. The globe model demands that oceans curve in all directions, even cling to the bottom of the planet. There's no lab-based fluid experiment that demonstrates this. As for spaceflight, it relies on telemetry locked behind agencies like NASA and ESA. But NASA admits most photos of Earth are composites. Why the need for stitching if satellites can supposedly photograph the whole thing? We also don't account for curvature in architectural design. Bridges like the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway or railway routes like the Great Western Line run dead straight for miles. Where's the curve? The truth is simple. We've been conditioned to accept the globe without question. But when you remove the conditioning and observe reality for yourself, you realize the Earth is flat. Flat Earth arguments may sound intuitive, but they collapse under scrutiny. Let's start with that skyline. What you see over Lake Michigan is caused by atmospheric refraction, a known phenomenon where light bends along temperature gradients doesn't mean the Earth is flat, it means physics works. The 8 inch per mile squared formula, it's only an approximation and fails beyond short distances. The correct calculation uses the Pythagorean theorem or the Sagitta formula and always includes variables for refraction, water clinging to a sphere. That's called hydrostatic equilibrium. And it happens when gravity pulls a fluid equally in all directions. The Earth's mass warps space-time, creating the gravitational field that shapes oceans into a geoid, an irregular but globally curved surface. Long-distance engineering projects do account for curvature when required. The Verrazzano Bridge's towers are over 1.2 inches further apart at the top than the base because of Earth's curvature. Spaceflight isn't dependent on trust. It's based on orbital mechanics. We've tracked spacecraft like the ISS using open-source real-time telemetry via TLE data and amateur radio networks. Hundreds of private organizations, not just NASA, validate those orbital parameters every day. And GPS? It wouldn't work on a flat plane. It requires triangulation using orbital satellites and time dilation models derived from Einstein's relativity. Flat Earth can't explain any of that. The globe model isn't just proven, it's the backbone of modern civilization. Remove it and everything from GPS to international flight collapses. Refraction is always the excuse, but it's not consistent. Why can we sometimes see a distant object clearly and sometimes not at all? The explanation moves to fit the observation. That's not science, that's rationalization. And the idea of hydrostatic equilibrium relies entirely on gravity a force we can't demonstrate directly. We can model it mathematically, but when tested at scale, like spinning a ball covered in water, the water flies off. You mentioned satellites, but high-altitude balloons and amateur rockets have reached over 120,000 feet and still captured a flat horizon, even without fisheye lenses. As for GPS and spaceflight, why does every route conveniently avoid Antarctica? Why are so many space images computer-generated? Where's the raw feed? Why do multiple space agencies use identical Earth renderings? Flat Earth isn't about filling in every detail. It's about exposing the gaps in a model that doesn't hold up when you take your eyes off the textbooks. 
Visibility depends on conditions. Atmospheric lensing, humidity, pressure gradients, they all affect what you can see. Just like you don't see stars during the day, light interference isn't always visible. You're still conflating the spinning ball example. That's an open system. Gravity doesn't work like a spinning toy. It operates on mass, not momentum. Balloon footage? Check the curvature from the Strata balloon launch in Germany in 2017, which used a flat lens camera. It showed a concave curve due to lensing distortion before stabilizing to reveal Earth's curvature at 115,000 feet. Antarctica's flight paths are limited for safety and international regulation, not conspiracy. But some charter flights do cross Antarctica. The Qantas route from Perth to Johannesburg, for example, cuts below the Indian Ocean. Unexplainable on flat Earth maps and the identical Earth renderings. They're generated using data from Earth-observing satellites like MODIS and SWOMI NPP. These are composited from real data because no single satellite can photograph the Earth in one image from low Earth orbit. That's not deception, it's imaging science. You keep saying it's just physics, but what's observable doesn't match the model. Water always lies flat in nature. The burden of proof is on those claiming oceans curve thousands of miles across the planet's surface and stick to the bottom. If GPS is satellite-based, why do signals drop in dense forests or valleys? Why can long-range navigation function using high-altitude towers and ground-based systems alone? And if Earth is truly spinning at over 1,000 miles per hour, why hasn't that ever been measured at ground level? Why don't flight times vary more dramatically east to west? I'm not saying I have all the answers, but maybe that's the point. The globe model's apparent precision masks real inconsistencies that don't stand up to scrutiny. The curvature of oceans isn't just observable, it's measurable. Satellite radar altimetry used in missions like Topex Poseidon measures ocean surface height with millimeter level precision. These data sets match the globe model perfectly. GPS dropouts in valleys are due to line of sight occlusion, not a lack of satellites. It's the same reason your mobile signal cuts out in a tunnel. As for Earth's spin, it's measured constantly. The Foucault pendulum demonstrates axial rotation. Gyroscopic sensors in aircraft and ballistic missile systems require compensation for Coriolis forces. Even your phone's accelerometer detects inertial shifts. Flight times? They do vary. Look at eastbound versus westbound transatlantic flights. The difference comes from jet streams and prevailing winds, all modelled accurately on a rotating Earth. The flat Earth argument keeps pointing out gaps, but never produces a coherent alternative. That's not discovery, it's denial. I'm not anti-science, I'm anti-assumption. When the Earth model is taught as fact before it's questioned, that's not education, it's indoctrination. Flat Earth isn't about rejecting every expert. It's about empowering people to observe and test for themselves. The models may be elegant, but if the evidence doesn't match what we experience, maybe it's the model that needs adjusting. I don't claim to have all the answers, but I claim the right to ask better questions. Science isn't about belief, it's about measurement. From the equinox shadow to orbital mechanics to real-time satellite tracking, the evidence for a spherical Earth isn't just overwhelming, it's operational. Flat Earth isn't an equal model, it's an absence of one. It explains nothing, predicts nothing, and tests nothing. The Earth is round, not because it's popular, but because it works. This debate cuts to the core of science itself. Do we trust observation when interpreted through models, or only what we perceive directly? The flat thinker made passionate arguments about perception, institutional trust, and inconsistencies in the globe model. They challenged imagery, water behavior, and engineering assumptions. The rounded one responded with measurement, models, and direct empirical evidence. From geodesy to fluid dynamics, from satellite telemetry to aerospace calculations. This wasn't just a debate about Earth's shape. It was about how we define knowledge. Based solely on the arguments presented, I find the rounded one's position far more compelling. While the flat thinker raised doubts worth investigating, their claims were rooted in misinterpretation, incomplete understanding, or anecdotal optics. The rounded one relied on testable, predictive, and peer-reviewed data, 
forming a consistent model that explains far more than what Flat Earth ever attempts to. Belief begins with doubt, but science begins when doubt meets data, and the data says we live on a globe. This was AI Debates. I'm the mediator. See you in the next argument. If you enjoyed the battle, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell, because the next debate could change the way you see the world.